the use of the Scottish two-hander, the Scottish greatsword, commonly but incorrectly known as claymore. Um, but I will use uh, the, the term claymore in this whole uh, video lesson series um, just because the Gaelic pronunciation uh, of the real term is uh, yeah, just too difficult and also uh, the claymore is just a common term known today for the Scottish two-handed sword. So, um, I wanted to start with an introduction not only of um, what material we will use, but also what training weapon you can use. So first of all, um, we use in the Catron Society a concept which is called the McGregor Method. Uh, this method was developed by Christopher Scott Thompson and it's kind of um, it's kind of an, a, a way to use um, your Highland broadsword skills and adopt the fundamentals and, and the principles, the fight principles, on um, every weapon you can imagine. It must not be a, a historical weapon, it can also be a modern weapon or an improvised weapon. From the historical sources, um, maybe the most, uh, um, the most known example is to adopt the broadsword or saber skills on a common walking stick, on a cudgel. So this is something uh, many sources mention and some show it in more details and some are just saying, okay, you use your uh, broadsword skills and adopt it on, on, on your walking stick. Just keep in mind that you don't have a cutting edge and keep in mind that you don't have a hand protection. And this concept of adopting um, the martial principles, the fighting principles of the Highland Broadsword, the weapon we have a lot of detailed sources for. Um, and this concept of uh, the McGregor Method works quite well and um, there's also a book written by Christopher Scott Thompson, I will put a link down below in the video description where you can find the book, where he describes the McGregor Method in detail, because you can train um, the McGregor Method as, you know, like uh, an addition to your broadsword skills, but you can also train it um, as a martial discipline on its own. So the approach for the, for the Scottish two-handed sword here is, in the first step, you take the broadsword principles, the basics you know, and adopt them on two-handed sword. And this might sound a little bit weird first, because the broadsword is one-handed sword, the two-hander obviously is a two-handed sword, but uh, within the video lesson series, you will see what that means. The next step is to take um, the little source material we have. We, we don't have, for the Scottish two-hander, we don't have uh, a how-to manual, like for the broadsword. So um, what we take is the weapon itself, um, its weight, its balance, its design. We take um, historical accounts of its use, like battle, battle reports, battle descriptions. And um, we take these little pieces of the puzzle into consideration when we use the Scottish two-hander. In addition, and this is an ongoing process uh, at the moment, um, also in my own work, uh, in addition, you can take um, sword fighting traditions from Europe uh, who are dealing with a two-handed sword. So this might be the German long sword, the Italian long sword, um, of course, obviously, the uh, Iberian Montante and uh, the Italian Spadona, and of course, uh, English long sword sources, which are also not only because of the geography very interesting, um, and there are many uh, interesting approaches on the English long sword. Um, like in example by Paul Wagner. I will put uh, a link in the video description to his uh, YouTube channel, but also to uh, an ebook, a short PDF file, which you can purchase um, online and which shows his approach on the English longsword and explaining the English longsword. And there are also other groups like uh, the Broadsword Academy Manitoba is also um, uh, working on the English longsword. So this material is also very interesting. What we do is not to you know, copy one on one the, the material we see in German Longsword, Montante, Spadona and so on and so on. Of course we, we try these things out, we exchange with people who are training um, all these disciplines. Um, 
to find out more about the core principles they are using. And then we are experimenting and, and thinking about how to adopt all this on our Scottish two-handed sword and how we can uh, um, use material and principles from these traditions in the context, in the historical context and the fighting context of the Scottish two-hander. So, of course, still what you will learn in this video lesson series is not um, you know, a finished product. It's, it's, as I said, it's still um, an, an ongoing uh, progress of, of you know, finding out more things, experimenting and so on and so on. And of course, it is educated guess. Okay, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not that I can say what you will learn here is exactly how the Highlanders use the two-handed sword. Um, it's just the way we do it and we think is a practical and, and also effective way to use it. So, um, yes, from here I want to start with uh, the first thing. Uh, that is a question of what can I use to train all these uh, techniques and all these uh, principles and lessons uh, you will see in future. The first training tool you can use, of course, is a steel claymore. A nice reproduction with blunt edges, which is useful for training and, and partner drills and also maybe for sparring. Uh, this one, for me, is a little bit short. It has more like uh, long sword um, measurements, um, but it's okay because it's uh, uh, the sword of one of my students and uh, she's not so big, so for her it's um, the right size. Um, and also we have to keep in mind that there are also uh, surviving examples of claymores which were not as big as you normally expect a claymore to be. So, the average overall uh, total length of, of a Scottish two-hander is around 140 centimeter ish um, But of course there are a little bit longer examples and also a little bit uh, um, shorter examples, so like 130 centimeters. Uh, and also um, Irish two-handed swords, um, which were found, were also not always so big. So I think the two examples they found were like also 120 or 130 centimeters in total length. Um, but still we know that the, uh, the, the painting of Albrecht Dürer, which is showing um, Galloglass uh, mercenaries and their, um, their currents, their light, light, uh, lighter armed warriors, um, they have, uh, one of the guys has a, a very big ring pommel of two-handed Irish sword. Um, we don't know if this sketch is an exaggeration by the artist or if it was the real thing. So, um, however, all the techniques you can do, of course you can do it with a shorter sword too. Okay? But um, if you purchase a steel training, um, a steel training claymore, you might consider uh, some important things. First of all, it should have obvious, obviously the right design as a claymore. Then the blade should be uh, should be as a typical claymore. I take this aluminium one as an example. You can see here the blade, the blade profile is quite flat, and it's um, it's it has the same broad and flat blade. Um, all over the blade length until the point. So it's not like a medieval longsword uh, tapering towards the end into a very narrow pointy thrusting um, uh, tip of the blade. So this one is okay, could be a bit broader, but for safety reasons and training reasons it's totally okay. Of course your personal taste also uh, is important. If you um, want to use a little bit more thrusting because you also train, for example, German longsword, or you just love uh, thrusting more, um, then you of course can um, have a blade with a pointier, with a pointier tip. But um, generally speaking, uh, a claymore would have more of a blade like this. So the advantage of steel training weapons, of course, is it's the real deal. It should have the 
the correct um, the correct balance, okay, the co correct flex, not too flexible but flexible enough, um, and of course the grip should have this kind of shape. Um, you can uh, I will I will put a link down below to my Patreon page. There is my article on um, the use and the design and the history of Scottish two-handed swords. And there you can also find a lot of details about, um, about the weapon, about the design and what type of pole was used and so on and so on. And there you can see if you want to have a training uh, a sword made of steel, that it has the right measurement and the right design. Um, I will put down a link below, it's, it's on my Patreon page, but it's uh, publicly available. Of course, I would be happy if you want to be, become a patron and support me on Patreon, but um, this article is uh, uh, also, um, you can also read this article without um, being a member of Patreon. Um, the article uh, is basing on, uh, on, a on a presentation I did um, on, at the International uh, Montante Symposium in Germany in 2018. I was invited to give a presentation on the history, use and design of the Scottish two-handed swords and um, later I turned this presentation into an article. So there you can read all the historical details uh, which I researched from my, after my best knowledge. So steel is of course one choice, but you have to take care. People who train uh, Montante and Spadone know that big heavy swords made of steel are quite dangerous, especially when you do all these um, really wide swings, um, which we have in the Montante in the Montante uh, rules, where you you know cut without stopping. With full force you cut the legs of a shield and swordsman, for example, and so on and so on. So steel is one option, but for, for uh, some drills we are training and for some things we are doing, it can be too dangerous. Another not so expensive, but still quite realistic possibility is a training sword made of aluminium. So you can see it has the right shape, it has the right length, but the complete sword, even the cross and the pommel and everything, is made out of aluminium. This is a custom sword which was made for us by our friend of Aluminium Arsenal, and uh, I will put down a link in the video description again. And you can see the blade, because of the length, is quite flexible. The aluminium is like six millimeters broad, it's rounded, it's kind of a safe training weapon, it's a little bit too light, not too much, but compared to steel, it's a little bit too light, but still, it is okay, it is okay, it's not overly heavy, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not too light, and um, it gives you kind of a uh, realistic sword train feeling. So I personally I really like to work with these aluminium trainers since I started to work with a two-handed sword. Uh, so this is really really a nice training tool and uh, it's not as expensive as a steel sword of course. Um, so this is another training tool but again it's not safe to use this in uh, free sparring, you can can do sparring with it, but you have you know to use the handbrake a bit, and you have to to be careful. And again, when you do uh, when you do uh, really realistic, when you want to do realistic drills with full speed and power, of course, contact is too dangerous with it. Or you should uh, you know put yourself into a real real good armor. So this is another option for a training weapon. Now this is another training tool you can use, and I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it is um, we, we purchased it from uh, Inmoto by our friend Paul Becker, and uh, he um, showed on Facebook. He showed in the Montante group. He showed uh, training uh, such training sorts for Montante training. And when I saw it, uh, I was thinking about yeah, you could do uh, a claymore. Out of it, just take the blade, take away the recusso grip, make it a little bit shorter, but 
the, the cross already has the right shape and this might be a good training tool. And it is, um, they weigh 1.8 kilos, so they have a very, very realistic weight, um, but this padded uh, blade, it's, it's not light form, it's not like a Chambara sword, um, this padded blade takes away a lot of the impact. So you, I mean, you still should wear protection, uh, of course, but um, you can use it for free, free drills very well, and you also can use it for sparring claymore against claymore. Of course, it's not a soft blade, but um, for doing the forceful cuts we are training, for doing the, the, the swinging and, and, and hacking through the opponent's defense, which is our approach, and not using much of, you know, like bind work, uh, like Winden uh, with, a, with, a, with a long sword, uh, they are just right. Okay, for this I highly recommend, if you need any training tool for, for partner drills and for, for free fencing, then you should purchase this one for, uh, for, the, for the claymore training. Another option is, of course, a training sword made from uh, plastic or, or nylon or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't have uh, a claymore made of this material yet. Um, I was thinking about maybe asking Black Fencer to do, to do one. I know they also offer Montante trainers and long swords, and they also have a kind of what I would call a simple great sword or simple, simple long sword, which already has the right me measurements um, in length and only needs, uh, it has a simple cross guard, it only needs the forward sloping cross guard typical for the claymore. Um, Black Fencer training weapons are great, um, they are quite realistic, they are quite affordable and um, but still you have to take in consideration that the experience at least people who training with the Montante training tools made by Black Fencer, they all like them very much as far as I know, but they also said that you have to be careful with them because they you know, still wait they are still not very light um, and they have a lot of impact. And even though the Claymore is shorter and lighter than the, than the average Montante, um, I still would have you know, little concerns to use them completely free. But um, because I'm not sure if our friend of aluminium arsenal still makes this one, maybe it's a good idea to have um, a Black Fencer made Claymore as a replacement. I will keep you uh, updated about this topic uh, in future, of course, but this is another option. I mean, if you want to be quicker than me, just go to uh, Black Fencer Facebook page, contact them and ask them for a claymore. I'm pretty sure they can uh, do one, maybe already they made one for someone as a custom product. Um, so I plan in future to have a Black Fencer claymore and uh, to give it a try. Um, yes. Speaking of plastic, of course, you can use the Rawlings or Red Dragon Longsword training uh, tool. I don't have to say a lot about uh, this training weapon because most of the people training HEMA know the Longsword training sword and the, the advantages and disadvantages of it. They are very light, they are very light, but therefore they are also very safe and still they are realistic enough for all the movements you want to do with a two-handed sword. But they are, of course, shorter than the average uh, claymore. But as you can see, they are not so different in blade lengths. It's more about the length of the handle. Maybe if you're kind of a craftsman, you could manipulate and make your own longer pommel. I know uh, Red Dragon offers a longer pommel. Um, but I'm not sure how long it is, but you could manipulate this in and make a, a longer handle. But you see in, in blade lengths, they are not so different, the two, the two uh, swords. So still, it is not a bad training tool for, for sparring. And um, of course, again, the blade uh, gets more narrow towards the point compared to the regular claymore. But um, 
still it's okay. You can still use it as a claymore and keeping in mind that there were historical examples which were not as long in total length, but from the blade length they are already okay and um, they are affordable and they are safe and they are great fun to use. So this is also an option. And the good thing about this is, about the red thread is, that you can easy, if you have already the basket hilt training sword, you can easily create what is called a Scottish half line. A Scottish half line sword is a sword which you might also call a half and a hand sword or a bastard sword. So it's a sword which is light and short enough to be used in one hand, but also long enough, especially the grip is designed to be also used with two hands. So the good thing about the Red Dragon training sword is that if you have the long sword and you have the, the basket hilt and broadsword, um, you just take the cross guard and the pommel of the long sword and put it together with the blade and the grip of the basket hilt sword. And then you have quite a nice training, training sword for uh, a Scottish half length sword. Um, about the half length sword, uh, I will maybe talk about this in, 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 uh, in another video uh, more in detail. Um, but in short, uh, we already worked out some techniques for these early medieval Scottish swords. Uh, if they are only one handed or also if they can be used you know, as a half and hand sword. And we described these techniques in our book Scorners of Death. I will put a link down below in the video description. But what you can also do is that you use all the techniques you train with the claymore and then adopt the two-handed material on the half-length sword and just experiment with it. Um, and the same is true if you want to use a half-length sword and you just adopt the, uh, the basket with the broadsword techniques in this weapon because as you can see they are about the same length, but the one thing has a basket hilt and can only be used in one hand and the other thing has a simple uh, cross guard. So you can try that out, of course, too. This was a short introduction to uh, the Claymore and especially um, about the training tools you can use to train the material we will cover in this video lesson series. Um, what I did not show, of course, were wooden training weapons, because I don't have them. And uh, what you can also do is, if you uh, want to start, but you don't, uh, you cannot chase a training weapon, um, you can also just use a stick of, of uh, a good length, uh, a staff, you know, hiking staff, a broomstick, or, or you know, just, just any kind of staff which has the right length. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget to check out the links in the video description. Uh, click the like and subscribe button and if you want to become a patron uh, there's also my patreon link uh, down below and so um, yeah see you in the next video